So as you can see, it snowed, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting, but at the same time, it's end of October, so yeah. I'm just so used to Vancouver, because I lived in Vancouver for almost 11 years, and they have such mild winters there, it doesn't snow much. And I do have a, an appointment booked to get winter tires put on my car, but the appointment's not for not until November 3rd because I was struggling to get an appointment. I probably should have booked it earlier. I booked it a week ago, but I probably should have booked sooner because everywhere was booked up. Yeah, I kind of miss snow. I mean, there's there are pros and cons of, you know, prairie winters versus Vancouver winters. You don't have to deal with the snow, like shoveling and all that as much in Vancouver, but I miss snow at the same time. Like it's one of the things I was excited about, although initially I was like, no, no, I don't have my tires on. It's so beautiful right now though. I think it looks especially gorgeous because it's pretty warm out. So the pond is not frozen over because I feel like in the dead of winter, it's just gonna look like a frozen snow field. But right now, since the water's not frozen, it looks so beautiful. Although we barely got to experience fall because <laughs> now this is gonna kill all the leaves on the trees. Oh yeah. Oh, really? Oh, really? So, yeah, it's currently Monday, the whatever of October. I know Thursday's the 27th, so that makes today 24th. But yes, yesterday and a bit on Thursday, I worked on some artwork. First, I did a spread in my sketchbook. Hey, that's my tripod, Missy. First I did a spread in my sketchbook, just kind of planning out some bunnies. I was like, wait, I want to do winter buns, but like the same bunny multiple times doing different tasks. Can you stop bumping the tripod? It's not for rubbing your cheek against. So anyway, I was, I was just very in the mood to start something new. I know I have this painting in the works right here, but that's not what I'm going to work on this week. <laughs> I was inspired to do something else, so I was like, why not start it while inspiration has struck? And I feel like I've, I'm in like a really arty mood. And because of that, I've reduced my live streams to only once per week instead of twice. Because yes, I can stream art, but it's not my favorite thing to stream. I kind of like just zoning out, putting on some Netflix shows, YouTube videos, and drawing on my own. I just find it so much more enjoyable that way. And so... I was, you know, the thing I like streaming the most is video games, but I just can't justify continuing to stream games twice a week. And I brought this up in a somewhat recent vlog. I switched up my schedule where it's like, okay, I have to uh, edit a vlog, then package orders, and then I can stream for the day. So it helped me get some stuff done before I actually started streaming, but it was still bothering me. And I actually took a whole month off from streaming. I just came back this past Friday, I took a whole month off just to get a whole bunch of stuff done. I was feeling really overwhelmed, especially because I had that shop update coming up and the family visits and everything. I was like, I just need some time away. And so I'm back, but only one day a week. The streams are the thing that get the most schedule changes because it's live. It's the hardest to stick to when it's something that's live. So that's why it's always flip-flopping, but that's the way it is for now, just because I don't know. I'm just, I'm too busy to have the two game streams a week. So Fridays will still be reserved for that, but that's it. Plus just since I've been feeling more inspired to do art, I'm gonna do that. Cause this year has been a little sparse in terms of art creation, so. <laughs> Let's jump on it while the inspo strikes, hey Kinky? <laughs> Yo, when did I spill all that coffee? <laughs> I didn't even see it happen, what? Okay. We got paper towel right here. I did a super deep clean of this room. Well, deep-ish, just thorough, I guess. Although now I have eraser dust all over the floor, but that's okay. First of all, new computer desk set up. <laughs> Looks a little silly right now. I've got a cable running to my art camera currently. So just ignore that. Actually, I think I have a clip to insert from before I put all this crap on the desk, but. <laughs> Yeah, I got it from Structube, and it is not one of the furniture pieces I was struggling to order. Those are coming later. A couple of the items are back ordered, so I'm not getting those yet. But, um, yeah, I got both my monitors on there. The Cintiq arm is screwed into the desk. I've got the ring light set up on the camera, because initially I just had the camera on the pole, but then I got the ring light put up there, which faces the window because I don't like it. I don't like the light to be directly in my face, you know? It's too harsh and it hurts my eyes. The mic can swivel over to come in between the monitors when I'm streaming. I don't have a keyboard tray hooked up 
because it's super glued to the bottom of the other desk because it fell out once. <laughs> So I just have the keyboard and mouse on the desk. I could get a different keyboard tray, but I don't know. One thing I love about this setup is the scanner is on the desk permanently because it was annoying, like busting out the scanner, plugging it in. Even at the old place, I had it under the desk, which was really annoying to scan. This will make it really convenient to scan, so I'll be much more likely to actually scan in my artwork. And then I just won't have to stumble across it later in my piles of papers and be like, oh yeah, I forgot about this. The printer is on the floor, but I don't use it much. Now, aside from this cable right here, I am very proud of my cable management here. It helps that the tower is off the ground, which is better because it it'll get less dust in it. And in the case of some kind of flooding incident, it would be more protected. <laughs> Now, if you look back here, it's a little scary, though. <laughs> but there's a system, okay? First of all, I have my surge protector mounted to the side of the desk. And then I also have this wire IKEA rack. So this is what it looks like. I have two, but I only used one. And I bought these forever ago. I was going to use them with my old desk setup, and I never did do it. And it's meant to be mounted in this orientation under your desk, so it's almost like a little basket but I mounted it to the side so that it wouldn't be visible. So there's stuff kind of going along there and I use little Velcro straps to tie stuff together, but also just to tie stuff to the metal rack. And so it's all hidden behind. I've got ties around here as well, keeping cables tidy. And then I have some hooks. So yeah, this I never did fix after I modified some stuff. So back here's a little messy, although you don't see it. It's, it's hard to have perfect cable management when you have so much stuff plugged in. But yeah, some of it runs across the back behind there. The rest comes across the desk because a lot of the cables are also not long enough to completely feed all the way around and then into the computer. So they just come across the desk like this. So back here, it's not perfect, but you can't see it. The only thing that's gonna be on the desk all the time is this, these are my earbuds. And so that's just gonna be sitting there all ugly. I just, I can't deal with Bluetooth ones, especially for anything that requires precision timing, because I feel like there's always just like a split second delay with Bluetooth earbuds. So I just don't, especially with when I'm gaming, I just can't. I can't have that kind of delay. This can probably go upstairs now, now that I have the two controllers. The cute one will stay down here. This will go upstairs in case I do any evening gaming. But anyway, yes, cable management. Very good. Very good. Even the printer has cables going. You can't see them. The only cable you see feeding to the desk is that white one. That's my ethernet cable. And that is something I'm gonna be modifying in the future because it's literally just running across the floor right now. Okay, this is the opposite of cable management right here. It's just running across the floor. I need to measure out what length I would need to feed it along the walls and then I can order a cable and like things to hide the cable, stuff like that. But for now, it's just running across the floor. And now I need to, well not right now, but next, I need to cable manage this. It's looking weird. I might even put the tower up here because I've got this whole back corner here with nothing on it. And then this whole area is gonna have to be redecorated. I just threw some stuff up for the stream. But eventually that Ikea cube system is gonna come along the desk here. So it kind of covers the lower half of this and then I can set stuff, like decorative stuff on top of it. And that'll be my stream background, but I'm not gonna move that until I get the console table that I'm waiting on. Now, before I get to drawing, I'm just going to quickly package up a few orders. Mimi? She started meowing right when I tabbed over to this order, and it says, Give the cat some pets for me, please. And there are little baby faces. Kiki, Anna would like me to pet you. Come here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> I think Minna's upstairs, though. Anna's order has 21 items. It's technically more because one of the items is the sticker set and one item is the Halloween bundle. Look at all this. <laughs> Woo Thank you. And there are the packages. I could do a pickup. I might just go bring them myself. It's close enough. And I'm back. What I'm gonna do next is scan these. I guess this page doesn't really need to be scanned but I'm gonna scan the clean sketches and I'm gonna tweak the artwork a little bit before I print these out because I'm gonna print and then transfer cleanly onto a new sheet of paper because I've got a bunch of erase marks in here. If I just inked and colored directly on here, it would it'd be a little messy. So I'm gonna scan and print, but also I wanna change up a couple things. Like I think this bunny's legs might be too long. This one's might be too short. Things like that. I can just move things around. Some of them I think maybe I made their forehead too big. I could bring everything down. So just do a few tweaks and then print them off 
so I can transfer to do the line art and coloring. So I've got my printouts. All the buns are scaled to be roughly the same size as each other and I've scaled the size of some of the objects. Some of them I printed twice, like these balls. I have a small size and larger size. And then the tree boughs, I thought these printed out kind of small, so I made a bigger version of it. Uh, just because I want to draw them roughly the size they're going to be, because that way it's uniform outlines and everything. Although I realized before I printed this off, I probably should have built the pattern, just so I would know the rough size I want everything to be. Um, and I for sure need to build the pattern before I decide on colors because, you know, I want to separate out the colors based on what items are next to each other. Like, I don't want a brown bow to be next to a brown bear, for example. So I'm going to build out the pattern with the line art and then I'll know what color I want everything. Like, I can do a rough color mock-up digitally. Just look at this magic. You move things around and it just builds the pattern for you. Like, Mm, I don't think these buns are the scale I want relative to the canvas size though because I want this pattern to have a lot of overlapping elements but right now I don't think the elements are going to overlap much. I don't want the buns to overlap each other but I want all the other objects to just fill in the gaps between the buns. I'm running into issues because I planned out how many bunnies I would need in advance by doing this. So I was like okay I need four bunnies but I didn't really factor in just how tall they would be. I mean actually this is kind Kinda accurate, there's pretty big gaps. But the gaps are even bigger because the bunnies are very tall and skinny. And so it doesn't line up the way I want to. This actually isn't a bad start because these gaps here, I can't really fit another bunny in there, but I could start filling in all those other objects into these gaps as well as between the bunnies. Ooh, I think we're getting somewhere here. I'm really liking this. I'm gonna add color and see. If it works, hopefully it does. It is getting dark out and woo, that looks way better on camera than it does in real life. Looks so dark in real life. <laughs> it looks gorgeous, look at those colors. Anyway. It's 7.09. I just finished coloring this. I did stop at one point to go cook some food. Like I made chicken thighs with some mashed potatoes and peas. But yeah, this is where I'm at. Okay, now I'm second guessing her little... I mean, I'm second guessing a lot right now. This bow might just be too big or maybe I need to make it multicolor. I had it white and I had her apron a cream color. I changed it. I liked it. And now that I'm zooming out, I'm like, well... Although it's hard to know how much I'm going to like certain colors, considering this is just flat color. This is not how it's going to look in the end, really. Like, there's going to be more contrast and whatnot, and so maybe it won't look so harsh. I'm just trying to do a mixture of light browns and dark browns. I'm trying to keep brown and green the main colors, and white. I mean, her apron could just be white. Yeah, I actually do quite like white apron. I might make this bow white again. Red's kind of okay too. Okay, the bow is shrunken down. I think I'm leaning towards brown. Heh, <laughs> that rhymes. And I think I like that apron being white. The, the baking bun is the only one that is wearing an apron. The rest don't have an apron. That's the pattern. That's the digital mock-up. But I'm going to do everything traditionally and then combine it all again. Like scan it, clean it up, combine it. Just so it has more of my feel because I do a lot of digital stuff for the shop and like I'll just discuss that when I'm doing the actual artwork. <laughs> I need to save something for the voiceover. Okay now I'm doing the speed paint portion of this and I'm gonna do a voiceover just chatting about my feelings about the shop and the direction of my artwork and how those things overlap. So after after the Halloween update I was feeling a little <laughs> I mean, I was feeling like the Halloween update was a little weird. I knew it would be a smaller update 
the thing is it was very rushed and kind of slapped together at the last minute because I didn't want to skip Halloween yet again. I'd been meaning to bring back the bunkin pin for the last two Halloweens and I was like, I need it to come out this year. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay, well, I need some other Halloween stuff to go with it. And I did make the thicker treat sticker sheet and the washi tape. And then I had the Cauldron Cuties art, which was older art I brought back. And I had the pumpkin patch, which is more just uh, like autumn themed. And so that was also something kind of older that I brought back because those had never been in the store before. But I did really like those those pieces. And I was like, yes, I need to put these in the shop. But it also felt a little scummy in a way because I felt like I was half-assing the shop update. And I was rushing it and didn't like that I felt so rushed and whatnot. And so now Christmas is coming up and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> rushing now for Christmas, which is also bad. And I already, I talked about this in my packing and chatting video where I, I was mentioning how I need to start working on stuff way earlier, especially because certain items I get manufactured take several months to get made and shipped. And so I need to be way ahead of the game. And so in this video, you see me working on Christmas slash winter art, which is not being way ahead of the game, but whatever. I just felt super inspired. But the other thing about the shop updates is I was looking at the art I made, like the thicker treat, for example, and I had made Sassy Santa recently. And I'm looking at those and I'm like, okay, <laughs> this does not really feel that Bailey J when I look at it. Yes, I like drawing little cutesy things, but... You know, these are simple digital illustrations with flat color, and that's not representative of my art at all. And there have been other stuff like that in my shop, and some of it I love, like my video game design, like sticker sheet pattern, love that. That's another example of simple digital flat color. But when everything is like that, it's just starting to bother me. I'm like, what am I doing? My shop does not represent the art I would typically make. What's with all this simple digital stuff? Where's the traditional stuff I would do? And part of it's difficult because not every product works for a full color traditional illustration. If it's something with a background, it works best maybe on like a full print tote bag or just an art print, maybe a zipper pouch you could get it printed on too. There's only so many things you can really print a full detailed illustration on for other things like the washi tape or an enamel pin. Uh, stuff like that, you need this more simple design or like the sketchbook, embroidered sketchbook covers. Those need to be pretty simple for the embroidery. And so it's completely different, right? And so I'm just trying to think, how can I get more overlap between my typical art and the shop? And when I thought of the winter buns, I thought this was the perfect chance to attempt something like that because once I thought of the winter buns and thought that I could do a pattern with overlapping elements. I just got so excited. So I was just so inspired to do it and motivated, even though I'm like, okay, are you really making another Christmas design this last minute? Like I really should have already ordered the sassy Santa stuff and I haven't other than the bags, which are not even going to be here for Christmas anyway. <laughs> Probably won't get them till next year. But I was like, are you really doing this last minute? Yes. Yes, I am. But to me, it's different because it wasn't me just quickly doodling something simple, digitally slapping some flat color and calling it a day. I really went all in on these buns with the planning and everything from like figuring out how many I would need, planning out the pattern in advance, the colors in advance, con consistently scanning things in. Like I scanned in the sketches just to overlay everything. And then I outline in color. I'm scanning them in again. The cleanup process has been nuts. You won't see me clean it up in this video. I'm not even done cleaning up the sketches, but that's taking so long, but it's going to be so freaking worth it because the way these illustrations turned out, I'm like, oh my God, this is so, <laughs> this is exactly what I wanted. It feels so much more me, feels so much more like my art, the things I'm into, and I just feel so much better about it. So I feel like this is more of the kind of stuff my shop needs. Not that I won't do any simple digital stuff, but I need more of this traditional stuff. And this is the stuff I normally get excited about. And I can't let the feeling of having to rush for shop updates dictate what I draw and how I draw. Now, I just wanted to read a little bit from my, <laughs> it's like my work journal, if that makes sense. I don't have a different journal, but I write in here whenever I'm trying to figure out work stuff. And if I'm making a change to a schedule or just feeling off about my work, I write in here. 
And so yeah, from October 18th, I wrote some stuff and I wanna read a part of it. It touches on what I just said, but also it kinda expands to a bit more stuff. So yeah, I'll just read a little bit of it here. It said, I wanna talk about the creation of art itself. Since I stopped art videos, I obviously make less art. To be fair, a lot of it wasn't good and was for art challenges and rushed videos. The idea of creating pieces that took a long time to complete was very appealing, and it still is. The problem is I hardly draw anymore, and often when I do, it's something simple and cutesy for the shop. I don't have much overlap between shop art and other art. Lately, I've had a strong urge to create large or detailed pieces without worrying about the shop. I'm also trying to figure out a way to merge the two a bit more, like make design elements traditionally instead of digitally, like some of the die cut stickers I made recently. They have more texture, shading, and soul. Slow down on the digital stuff. The iPad is easier to use on the couch, but simple pencil illustrations are doable too. Traditional doesn't have to be full color all the time, especially in planning stages. The move to Calgary is also a big reason for creating less art, and I'm feeling a huge itch to create tons of art. I feel like my spark is back. Reducing to one gaming stream a week will help. I feel less inclined to play games and more of an urge to draw, but I don't really like live streaming art, which is why I'm not replacing a game stream with an art stream. I love just putting on a show or YouTube video and chilling while I create. It's so much more enjoyable. I will also allow myself to record it minimally if I want, grab 10 to 20 short clips instead of rolling the entire time. Although some days it is nice to hit record and forget about it, but the point is I will allow myself options and not everything needs to be recorded. A perk of the couch iPad sessions is that it automatically records, and I think that's why I did so much iPad art. Sketchbook couch sessions would not be recorded, and that's okay. Get rid of the YouTuber mindset in those cases. You can always share the final result later. A lot of my favorite artists don't even post to YouTube. They're creating art off camera and because they enjoy it. Creating art has been on the back burner for so long, and I finally feel the urge to do something about it, People don't watch speed paints these days anyway. They want short form content, which works perfectly with what I want. And I went and talked about some more stuff. Um, as I was reading that though, I just wanted to specify about my comment about digital art and feeling like the traditional art had more soul. That is not a comment about traditional versus digital in general. I mean my digital art versus my traditional art. There's a huge difference, especially when it comes to me working on little designs for the shop. Like I've created some nice digital stuff, but I feel like a lot of what I've done recently is not up to my standards in terms of what I would typically draw. <laughs> and the whole filming thing is really huge because I do have that YouTuber mindset. It's like, if I'm gonna draw something, I have to film it. And I'm like, no, no, you don't. You can just show the result when you're done or you don't have to show it at all. But I feel like I'm not someone who's drawing a ton. So I do feel like I need to show everything because there's not a whole lot to show. <laughs> But I'm hoping that kind of changes. Like like I said, I just right now, I just want to draw a bunch of crap. I think it's because I'm finally feeling more settled after the move and everything and less frazzled. Although in a way I am because it's end of the year, it's busy and there's <laughs> feels like there's so much going on between now and the end of the year. But at the same time, it's hard to put into words. But I think a big part of me creating less art is, well, one busy year with the house stuff but I'm a person who really thrives on schedules although I then feel guilt if I miss anything in the schedule or if I'm feeling a little burnt out and need to make changes but if I leave myself to my own devices I will not really get much done like I commit to posting a YouTube video every week yes this one is going up a day late it's been a very busy week for me but I'm still gonna post it because I'm committed. I have that guaranteed video, one video per week, unless I'm traveling or something, I have that guaranteed video. And sometimes I even do two, although I don't commit to the two. But <laughs> if I don't have that forced once a week upload, I drift away from it. Cause I've tried it in the past where I'm like, okay, I'm just not gonna have an upload schedule. What happens? I don't post as much. And so a byproduct of me not doing the art videos is I'm now not doing as much art because I'm not forcing myself to pump out a certain amount of it every week. And that's nice because I want to be able to just spend more time on artwork and not rush things. But it's like I swung too far in the other direction. I'm like, okay, there's no discipline here. And so I'm really not doing much of anything. And it's not that I don't want to. It's just like your mind always makes excuses or prioritizes other things. Maybe I have... 
four hours in the evening, but I just want to kind of veg on the couch and not do anything. Or for example, I have the game streams. I mentioned dropping one. These were scheduled live streams. So it felt like that was a thing I'm committing to into my schedule. So for some reason, I always had time for games, but why do I feel like I don't have time for art? Like (laughs) clearly something's wrong here. And I think it just comes down to the whole schedule thing. And I don't want to necessarily schedule in specific art time all the time. Every week is so different that I don't, you know, I don't want to have it like a thing I need to check off on my checklist. But I just feel like I got to that point where I've kind of snapped and I'm like, okay, enough is enough. (laughs) I really want to do more art. So I'm making the time for it. And I kind of did that with these buns. I spent so many days on this. I'm like, whatever. Are there other things I should be doing or could be doing? Yeah. Am I neglecting some emails? Yeah. There's a ton of other stuff I could be doing. There's house stuff that needs to be done. I just think if you really want to do something, you're going to make time for it. And right now, I really want to do it. So I'm making time for it. And that's my little ramble, I guess, about (laughs) shop art versus my normal art and just my feelings about art creation lately. Hmm, yes. So at this point, I have all the artwork drawn and I've started the cleanup process. I was doing that on Friday's stream. I know I said... (laughs) no art streams, but it wasn't really art. It was just erasing the background on everything and tidying up the scan. So it wasn't like a creative process on camera. It was just working. But I want to finish cleaning those up this weekend, get the pattern made, get like a washi made. I'm trying to not go all out with this because I do also have Sassy Santa and I just can't have too many products. Plus it's going to be kind of like a late shop update. It'll be early December if all goes well, but that's still kind of late to release everything. So I don't want to go all out. So I might use some of this bun art on products for next year because there's so much that could be made into. But for this year, I do want to try to do pillowcases with the pattern on it. And then the individual buns would be a set of light up acrylic ornaments for your tree and a sticker sheet and washi at least those four things that might be it because we do also have sassy santa but i'm very happy with it and i like that it was something i truly enjoyed and wasn't just trying to pump it out real quick for the sake of pumping something new out because i really didn't need anything new designed for christmas but here we are and lastly i just want to say a little bit about the bunny artwork The first bun was the most time consuming by far because I hadn't solidified what Copic colors I was using. And I had a little test sheet that I was using because I redid the outlines for the cookie bun at one point. But the browns, I did not have the right shade of brown for Copics. I don't know if it even exists what I'm looking for for these buns. I want something a little on the pink side and the only pinkish brown I have is E04, but it's too pink. And all the other E0s are not even pink like that. E04 is really an anomaly when it comes to Copic colors because it doesn't match anything else in its color family. (laughs) And so I was left trying to layer different colors and I thought I wanted one thing, but then it looked too yellow. So I was overlaying other colors. And same thing with the greens. I couldn't quite get what I wanted to. And that nib I was cleaning at the beginning, I didn't even end up using that marker. I did at first a little bit. But then I covered it up and did not end up using that green for the rest of it. So a lot of color layering since I couldn't quite get what I wanted. And I wasn't 100% satisfied with the brown of the bunny. But then I thought, you know what, just move on because you're going to be doing pencil fur on top of it. And that's going to change the color. So just move on. And then I did all the fur for the remaining bunnies back to back before coloring the rest of the items just so I could have more consistency. But the bundled bun with the little toque and the hand muff things, what are those even called? I don't know. But (laughs) that bunny is a slightly different color than the rest, but it's not too noticeable. Um, What else was there about these buns? Oh yeah, I used those Posca pens for the plaid pattern and that worked out really well. It was nerve wracking and I made a lot of mistakes. Some of them I could cover up by just coloring over the Posca with Copic and then reattempting. You can tell where I did it, but it's a little bit subtle. Also, when I scan it, I can just erase the mistake too. But even on the originals, don't look that bad. And so, yeah, I put a lot of time into these buns and I will be putting in more time, but it was very enjoyable and it was exactly what I needed. It scratched my creative itch. It works well for the shop also, and it's something I'm proud of. I hope you enjoyed my little art chat, and I hope you enjoyed seeing the artwork. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.